Hello. Today's lecture video will deal on the term continuity, which is a closely related concept of the section limits. We had in the earlier lecture seen how to define the limit of a function at a point, how to arrive at that limit by closely watching the function from the left and from the right at that point. So checking out a function from the left to the point and from the right to the point and then checking out the corresponding movement of the function will make us understand what the limit at that point is. And we learn how to distinguishly identify whether the function is continuous at a particular point or not. So in this section, let's see how to define the word continuity. The term continuity or continuous makes us to think about something which, uh, which doesn't have any break. Uh, usually we say about continuous process, that is, it is happening as such without any break, right? So, continuity is a concept similar to that. That to officially and rigorously define it mathematically, we can say that a function f of x is said to be continuous at a point x is equal to x naught if the limit of the function f of x as x tends to x naught is equal to f of x naught. So, if we say that a, fu a function f is continuous at x naught, it means that 1 limit x tends to x naught f of x x is as well as 2 limit x tends to x naught f of x is equal to identically equal to f of x naught. We can just uh, look at some examples of uh, continuous functions. Uh, in the first graph here, you can view the function, exponential function, f of x is equal to e raised to x. The function will be graphed like this. Okay. Uh, suppose if you have a point x here, you know that the corresponding point will be recorded as ordered pair x comma f of x and arbitrary points will be mapped like that. And the next function you can think about this function f of x is equal to x which is the identity function. The function will be a line at uh, 45 degree angles with respect to the positive real positive x axis here. See? So in the first function f of x is equal to e raised to x you can see that the function is going like that without any break. Right. So that is the basic property of a function that it will not have any breaks. So for this function also you can see that the function is moving like that without any break. So it is a continuous function. So how to um, check out the limits? So suppose uh, this point is uh, 1. Okay. This point is marked as 1. Okay. So that means the corresponding functional value f of 1 will be e power 1 or e. Right? So what will be this particular point? This point will be 1 comma e to be very precise. Okay, now we are going to check the limit of the function e raised to x at 1. Okay, so what will we do? We will move from the left towards 1 
and move from the right towards one and check how the function also behaves. So we'll move from the left and we'll move from the right and we know that the function is moving towards this point, right? So what is the limit? So the limit will be limit x tends to 1 e power x, right? e power x is equal to, what is this point? That point is nothing but e and we know that e is equal to f of 1, right? f of 1 or here that will be nothing but e power 1 which is equal to f of 1. So that satisfies our definition of the formula for continuity. So that means uh, our function f of x is equal to e power x is continuous at the point 1 and it will be the same for any other point. Okay. Now uh, this is the function uh, the identity function here suppose if this point is minus 1 say okay you are going to check for the continuity of this point so uh, of the function at this point we will move from left we will move from right and uh, check for the corresponding Uh, limits of the function. So uh, we will move from the left as well as we will move from the right and then we see that the function is tending towards this point. Okay. So what is that point? That point is nothing but f of x is equal to f of minus 1 which is nothing but minus 1. So, what did we obtain here? We can say that we obtained here okay. um, we obtained here limit x tends to minus 1 of the function is x is equal to minus 1 which is nothing but x which is equal to f of x. So that means our function is continuous at this point minus 1. Now let us look at uh, this function f of x is equal to x square. So this is the uh, graphical representation of f of x is equal to x square. You can see that there is no break anywhere, right? So suppose if I am taking uh, minus 2 here, so what will be the corresponding functional value? That will be minus 2 square is equal to 4, right? So let us check out the uh, limiting of the function at minus 2, we approach from the left, we approach from the right. So when we approach from the left and when we approach from the right, what we get is that the function is moving towards this point. So here we are getting that limit x tends to minus 2 x square is equal to what is the point? Point is 4 which is nothing but minus 2 square that is f of minus 2. So that means our function is continuous at this point and you can understand that the function is continuous at each point in the domain. Now let us check out what the f of x is equal to x square, x cube. Here also you can see that the function does not have any break. So the function is continuous. It is every point on this function uh, is, uh, the function is continuous on every point of the graph.
uh, that applies for uh, each of the function we discussed. Now, let me take some other color. So this is continuous function. This continuous function. This is also a continuous function at every point. Okay. This con these four are continuous at every point in the domain. Now let's check out with this graph. Okay. So this is f of x is equal to 1 by x. You can see that the function is going like this and then the function is going like this. That means a break is happening. Okay. So let's check what happens at 0. So here we are approaching from 0 to the left, 0 from the left and approaching 0 from the right. So we are checking from the left for the graph and we are checking the right for the graph, right? So in this case, what we obtain is that limit itself does not exist. That is limit extends to 0. 1 by x does not exist. This is an observation you might have uh, seen while we were dealing with limits. So our first uh, criteria is not even satisfied. That means this function is not continuous at 0. So be specific. Not continuous at 0. At 0. But you have to understand that the function is continuous in the rest of the domain. So if you take a point here, say call it 1, okay, that means at that point if you are coming from the left and if you are coming from the right, here also if you are coming from the left and from the right, you get the point as this one, right? Which means that limit x tends to 1, 1 by x is equal to, what is the value? That will be 1, which is nothing but f, 1 by 1, that is f of 1. So, this function is not continuous at every point in the domain, but this function is continuous at every point in the domain except 0. So, that is what uh, these graphs give us an idea about. Okay, uh, now you have to consider a uh, uh, rational function uh, which is formed uh, with a numerator and a denom denominator. The numerator is a, is, a, is a polynomial as well as the denominator is also a polynomial. Um, so such a function is called a rational function. So for a rational function also, if f of x is a polynomial or a ratio of polynomials, uh, it is often called a rational polynomial, and uh, f of x naught is fixed, is defined, then also limit x tends to x naught f of x is equal to f of x naught. So all rash that means all rational functions are continuous. So that is uh, an important information there, what you're getting. Any polynomial or any ratio of a polynomial will have the corresponding limit at a point equal to f of x naught provided f of x naught is defined. So this is a very important fact. If f of x naught is defined, the polynomial will be continuous at that point. So as an example, Consider limit x tends to 4, 1 by 4x minus 2. So, what is f of 4? f of 4 will be 1 by 
16 minus 2 that is 14 that is 1 by 14 so if that exist then limit extend uh, then limit extends to 4 1 by 4x minus 2 is equal to 1 by 14 okay uh, that is uh, the function 1 by 4x minus 2 is continuous at the point x is equal to 4 that is what we get the inference from now in example 5 you have two questions to find the limit uh, the first question is limit of a rational function you have a numerator and a denominator with polynomials right so we have to find limit at x tends to 2 when you understand that when 2 is substituted in the denominator you are getting 0 right 2 square plus 2 square minus 8 that is equal to 0 so here you have to uh, understand that uh, you have to cancel out factors uh, if there are so first what you're going to do is uh, both are quadratic poly polynomials so you can use the normal the numerator for the numerator you have the product to be minus 6 the sum to be 1 then the possibilities are 3 and minus 2 right so you know 3 into minus 2 is equal to 6 minus 6 3 minus 2 is equal to plus 1 so you can factorize it as x plus 3 into x minus 2 and for denominator you have minus 8 as the product plus 2 as the sum that means you have uh, 4 and minus 2 as the factors that is you can factorize it as x plus 4 into x minus 2 and that gives us a hope of the cancelling and then you are left with x plus 3 divided by x plus 4 so this rational function is equal to this rational function so limit of the given rational function is equal to limit of x tends to 2 x plus 3 divided by x plus 4 yes that is the replacement rule which we learned in the last video lecture and as this is a rational function uh, at 2 you know the function takes 2 plus 3 divided by 2 plus 4 that means 5 by 6 so since it is a rational function uh, the rational function is continuous at a point where the fun the value of the function exists so you can say that this is equal to 5 by 6 so the next question was uh, question number uh, question 2 which says limit delta x tends to 0 where the numerator had delta x the whole square plus 2 into delta x divided by delta x the whole square plus delta x where delta x is a variable so we are thinking about um, substituting delta x as 0 then the, in the denominator you know that it is uh, vanishing it is taking the value 0 so that means the the value of the function doesn't exist if it is like that so you have to check whether we can uh, have cancelling out possible obviously there is cancelling out because all of the terms and the sums have delta x so you can cancel uh, you can take delta x out so out here delta x into delta x plus 2 the whole divided by delta x into delta x plus 1 so you can cancel them out okay so that's how you obtain limit delta x tends to 0 of delta x plus 2 divided by delta x plus 1 uh, by the replacement rule we learned earlier and this when delta x tends to 0 when delta x is substituted 0 you get 2 by 1 that means the function's value is uh, 2 by 1 that is equal to 2 the function's value is 2 that means uh, by the continuity of rational functions we just mentioned you can get that to be 2 there are many limits that cannot be dealt with the laws of limits so far for example suppose if uh, x naught is positive then 
limit x tends to x naught root of x is equal to root of x naught. That is the function f of x is equal to root x is continuous at x naught. Okay. So, how to look at this? Assume that limit x tends to x naught root of x is equal to some L. Okay, suppose it exists. Then what you can do is uh, multiply uh, this with limit x tends to x naught root x into limit x tends to x naught root x. That will be equal to L into L. That is L square. And by the property of limits, what you can do is this is equated to limit x tends to x naught root x into root x, which is x. So limit x tends to x naught x is equal to x naught. So now that L must be positive because root x is strictly greater than 0, right? For all x which are positive. And we know that all x which are close enough to x naught are positive. So hence L is equal to root of x naught. This limit is uh, a consistent with uh, when we are sketching the graph, which you can see here. So this is the graph. So you know that limit x tends to x not root x is equal to root x naught. Now the next example uh, is also to find a limit. Limit x tends to 3, 8 x square divided by 1 plus root x. By using the properties of limits and continuity of root x, we get limit x tends to 3, 1 plus root x is equal to, by splitting the terms, you get it to be 1 plus root x. Okay. So that is uh, 1 plus root 3. Thus, limit x tends to 3, 8 x square divided by 1 plus root x. Yes, obviously, this is not equal to 0. So, when you, you, are, uh, you are having a fraction and you are giving the limits to the numerator and denominator, always you have to check whether the denominator is not equal to 0. So, here it is 1 plus root 3, it is not equal to 0. So, you can use that rule. Limit x tends to 3, 8 x square divided by 1 plus root x is equal to uh, limit x tends to 3, 8 x square divided by limit x tends to 3, 1 plus root x, that is equal to 8 into 3 square divided by 1 plus root 3. So, you get 72 divided by 1 plus root 3. So, the next question is limit x tends to 0 mod x divided by x. So, this function can be plotted like this. Uh, you know that uh, mod x is, is the function x when x is greater than or equal to 0 minus x when x is strictly greater than 0. Okay, so mod x by x is the function. That means you have x by x coming when x greater than or equal to 0 minus x by x when x is strictly less than 0. That is nothing but 1 when x greater than or equal to 0 and minus 1 when x is strictly less than 0. So that is the function which is drawn. So for x greater than or equal to 0 you have the value 1 and for x less than or equal to 0 you have the value that is uh, negative 1. Okay. So the function uh, is this and uh, you know that uh, try to think about the limit at 0. Okay. So you are happen to look from the left and from the right. So the, from the left, uh, from the left you have the function here, from the right you have the function here. That means the limit, what is the inference there? Inference is limit x tends to 0 mod x by x does not exist. 
right so that is uh, a nice example okay now we are going to think about something called one sided limit so for this function you know that when we are approaching from the left towards zero the function is tending towards minus 1 when we are approaching from the right towards zero the function is approaching 1 right so you can think that the left hand side limit of the function at zero is minus 1 and the right hand limit of the function at zero is 1 so that is a possibility and how do we write it we write it like this limit x tends to 0 plus mod x by x this is the right hand limit coming from the right that is equal to 1 and limit x tends to 0 minus mod x divided by x is equal to minus 1 okay So let's see the next example, which is to find limit x tends to infinity one by x. So here, as x is approaching very large numbers, one by x will approach smaller and smaller. It will the quantity will become very small, small. so that means limit x tends to 0 1 by x is equal to 0 when the denominator is moving towards a very large number 1 by x is tending towards 0 now let us look at the or we can think about this as limit x tends to infinity 1 by x can be thought of thought of as limit x tends to 0 x that is equal to 0 right that means uh, the numerator is moving towards large value means the whole of it is moving towards zero so these are both these both are uh, the same limit x tends to infinity 1 by x is equal to limit x tends to zero x how did it come uh, one okay uh, the second question is limit x tends to infinity 2x plus 1 divided by 3x plus 1 so infinity is coming so how can you rearrange it you can uh, divide the numerator by x and denominator also by x so you get limit x tends to infinity 2 plus 1 by x divided by 3 plus 1 by x then you are taking uh, limit x tends to infinity to the numerator and denominator then you get 2 plus 0 divided by 3 plus 0 because limit x tends to infinity 1 by x is equal to 0 limit x tends to infinity. One by x zero zero here. Limit x tends to infinity two. A constant value is two. Limit x tends to infinity three is equal to three. So you get two by three. The third question is limit x tends to infinity five x square minus three x plus two divided by x square plus one. That is equal to limit x tends to minus infinity. You are dividing the denom denominator and the numerator divided by x square because x square is the highest. uh degree of the function x of the term x coming right so you get uh, 5 minus 3 by x plus 2 by x square divided by 1 plus 1 by x square then x is tend uh, made to tend to minus infinity then also this 3 by x will be limit x tends to minus infinity 3 by x is equal to 0 limit x tends to minus infinity 2 by x square is equal to 0 limit x tends to minus infinity 1 by x square is equal to 0 you get 5 minus 0 plus 0 divided by 1 plus 0 that is equal to 5 so that is an important uh, way of doing such problems when x tends to infinity okay uh, the next question is find limit x tends to infinity f of x and limit x tends to minus infinity f of x for the function given the function is plotted so assume that the ends of the graph continue as they appear to be going it is moving like that okay we conclude that limit x tends to infinity f of x is equal to 2 and limit f x tends to infinity f of x f, limit x tends to minus infinity uh, 
minus infinity f of x is equal to 0. How do we do that? Uh, you know that uh, this function is moving like this and it is tending, uh, uh, behaving as it is moving closer to the uh, line 2. See, the function is moving like this and it is moving like an asymptote. It is called an asymptote uh, that it, it is touching the line x is equal to 2 at infinity. Uh, and in the left, the function is touching the x axis that is y is equal to 0 this uh, at uh, 0 right at uh, when it is moving towards infinity that means limit x tends to infinity f of x is equal to 2 and limit x tends to minus infinity f of x is equal to 0 so this can be easily inferred from this graph so the next example is find limit x tends to 2 minus 3x divided by x square minus 4x plus 4 so when you substitute 2 in the denominator you get that uh, 2 square minus 8 plus 4 that means uh, you are getting it to be 0 so we need to uh, check out for factoring so in the denominator uh, you understand that that is equal to x minus 2 the whole square so uh, the function is nothing but minus 3x divided by x minus 2 the whole square. We cannot cancel it out. Now what you are doing is uh, for x near 2, the numerator is near minus 6. That is if we substitute uh, x is equal to 2, you get minus 3 into 2 that is equal to minus x while the denominator is small and positive that means it is moving towards 0. So the quotient what we obtain will be very large and negative because you have a negative sign here. So that is nothing but uh, we denote such a condition as minus infinity when the value is very large and negative. So you get limit x tends to 2 minus 3x divided by x minus 2 whole square to be minus infinity. The next question is limit x tends to 0, 3x plus 2 divided by x. So 3x plus 2 divided by x is e can be written as uh, when we split it out, you get 3 plus 2 by x. So when x is near 0, what happens is 2 by x, that becomes very large, right? So according to the sign of x, Right. Uh, according to the sign of x, it becomes very large. Uh, so uh, we can say that since x can be approaching from the left and from the right, uh, the limit can be positive infinity or negative infinity. Okay. So we cannot say that the limit actually exists. So that is a condition there. Uh, as we had seen in the function f of x is equal to 1 by x. We had seen the same condition there at x is equal to 0. So that's uh, the end of this section. And you have to work out questions 1, 2, 3, 4. Seven, eleven, twelve, thirteen, twenty. Then you can do twenty two, twenty seven, thirty three, thirty seven. Thirty-eight, forty-eight, just you can end up the exercise section by solving. 
56 and 58. So that's how we end up with the continuous functions and the next section is the derivative section uh, with more detailed review. So thank you for watching out.